have you ever been to a small island and wondered how do they keep the shelves stocked here? Well, you've come to the right place. In today's video, we'll look at the intricate logistics that keep small islands supplied. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. This is Greece. This Mediterranean country has a lot of small, inhabited islands, many of which have been inhabited for millennia. Local production is inherently limited due to the small, often mountainous landmass and limited water supplies, which means that a lot of stuff has to be imported. Greece uses a plethora of methods to keep its numerous small islands running, including ferries, cargo ships and airplanes. This is Naxos, the biggest island in the Cyclades archipelago. The Cyclades and other Greek islands are extremely popular tourist destinations due to the warm, sunny weather, pleasant calm seas and remnants of ancient Greek civilization. With masses of tourists coming each and every year, the need for a logistic system increases. After all, all the supermarkets, bars, restaurants and others need to be restocked frequently. Let's look at the ways this small island keeps its shelves stocked. Shipping, one of the oldest Greek industries which is still relevant to this day. From the founding of the port of Piraeus near Athens in the 5th century BC to today, the Greeks have always been kings of the sea. In fact, Greece has the largest merchant fleet in the world even though the country is physically smaller than the American state of Florida and has a smaller population than the country of Cuba. Almost every inhabited island, regardless of its size, has a seaport. For many of them, like the island of Amorgos, it's their only link to the outside world. On many smaller islands, pretty much everything, from food to vehicles to gasoline, is imported by massive cargo ships. Ships play a crucial role in getting tourists to island destinations as well. Passenger ferries usually depart from surrounding islands and the port of Piraeus near Athens. These are not the small ferries that run in cities, like the numerous boats that run in Prague. These ferries are more similar to smaller cruise ships. After a ferry docks, sheer pandemonium begins, with everyone trying to maneuver their cars in the narrow streets at once and with numerous buses coming in to take passengers around the island. For the few products that are able to be made locally, the seaports are crucial in exporting their products to the outside world. For example, the islands produce olive oil and without ships, transportation of the local delicacy would be much more expensive. Transportation by sea is the most important part of running small islands, but it's not the only part. Let's look at air travel next. Lots of small islands also have airports to serve their logistical and passenger needs. The island of Naxos also has a small airport with a 900 meter or 2,953 feet long runway. The airport sees roughly 10 passenger flights on small ATR-42 prop planes per day in the high season. All of these flights go to the capital city of Athens. Athens itself is a hub for Greek domestic air travel. Even though Greece is a relatively small country, both in terms of landmass and population, it hosts a strong domestic air travel network. This is due to the fact that the country has lots of inhabited islands which cannot be accessed by road or rail. Other than passengers, some mail and cargo is carried in the cargo hold of the aircraft, as is common practice in the airline industry. Domestic air travel in Greece is operated by three airlines, Olympic Air, Sky Express and Aegean Airlines. Aegean mostly operates services to large islands like Crete, while Olympic and Sky Express usually fly to smaller islands using mostly small propeller aircraft. Goods and people have to be transported around the island after arrival, so let's look at intra-island transport. Once cargo gets to the island, it needs a way to get around. Unfortunately, due to the low population density, small landmass and often mountainous terrain, freight trains aren't practical. That means that pretty much all freight around the island is transported by trucks. Trucks pick up cargo at the seaport and then transport it around the island. These carry all sorts of goods that can be made locally, such as gasoline, some food, spare parts for vehicles, etc. Passenger transport is a similar story. The Greek islands don't have railways, so public transport is provided by buses and ferries. These services are available and run with a decent frequency, at least on Naxos. We'll get back to them in a second. 
Unfortunately, with the nature of the Greek islands being small, not very densely inhabited and mountainous, towns and villages are absolutely filled with carts and motorcycles. One interesting trend I've noticed while I was on Naxos is that SUVs and pickup trucks aren't very popular here. And in the case of pickup trucks, I've noticed that the ones that run here are actually practical work pickup trucks. These have long beds placed low to the ground for easy loading and unloading. I haven't seen a lot of the ones you see frequently in the US and Canada or as I'd like to call them, the compensator mobiles. Another thing that's very prevalent here is small motorcycles. Due to gas being very expensive here, with the prices reaching as high as 2 euro 25 cents per liter or 8 euro 51 cents per gallon of gas, small motorcycles, which burn considerably less gas than cars, are a very common sight. Most people either drive one of these or a smaller car like the Fiat Panda or Citroen C3. The fuel is so expensive partly due to the fact that it has to be imported by cargo ships and then transported by trucks to the gas station. On the mainland, gasoline gets to the gas station using pipelines, the cheapest form of transportation for oil and gas. Of course, tanks like the newer Ford F-250 models and Chevrolet Suburban can be found here as well. But due to the narrow nature of the streets and roads, not to mention the very expensive fuel, they're not a common sight here. Especially considering that the average Greek makes far less money than the average American. This means that the average Greek has less money to blow on expensive gasoline than the average American. Another factor contributing to the high price of gas and therefore smaller car sizes is taxes. Taxes make up about 1 euro of price per liter of gasoline. In comparison, the federal US gas tax is 18.4 cents per gallon or 4.8 cents per liter. Even the most gas taxing state, California, only has a tax of 58 cents per gallon or roughly 15 cents per liter, almost 7 times smaller than Greece. For people that don't want to or can't afford to drive, there's the aforementioned public transport. Regular scheduled buses run on most of the islands. Apart from walking and cycling, this is the most cost-effective way to travel around the islands. The buses are run by KTEL, which is a consortium of numerous bus companies in Greece. KTEL is divided into regions, so for example, on Naxos, the company that runs the buses is called KTEL Naxos. These buses mostly run from the capital city around the island, and sometimes they go to tourist destinations. They are definitely viable methods of transit on small islands. Walking and cycling can be viable on short distances too. In the morning and evening, when the heat isn't as strong, you can see a lot of people walking and cycling to their destinations. In conclusion, small islands rely on multiple different modes of transport to keep goods and people flowing in, out and around the islands. All of these have their advantages and drawbacks, but together, they create a robust transportation system. Thank you so, so much for watching to the end, this has been Tramley and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!